All right guys, so you're gonna kind of get my perspective on this video of doing the front mount intercooler. Right now, we're in the midst of making a video for Anthony's wheels and uh, probably burnout shit that you'll see, but he's gonna paint his new Mazda Speed 6 wheels. Matt Black. Matt Black, Matt Black, yo. And I'm going to start by removing my front bumper and probably my stock intercooler and start mocking up in seeing if I can get it to fit because the only only downfall is the kit I got is for a second gen speed 3 CX racing front mount. I hear that uh, I, I heard that um, first gen stuff will fit on a second gen but second gen won't fit a first but if you think of it like that that really doesn't make too much sense so maybe if I need to do some tweaking or different hoses or pipes i still have some gold stuff from the universal kit when i did the van so i'm going to try my hardest to get this to mock up correctly and i'm going to use my stock bypass valve on the flange on the front mount for now because i'm not trying to use a cx racing blow off valve and i'm not tuned for a, a venta atmosphere completely so i need a like a research, like a hybrid, I guess you would say, which I'm gonna buy eventually. Actually, my girlfriend's supposed to be giving me money. Not that, like, I need money to buy car parts, but like she owes me money, kind of thing. So, yeah. So I'm gonna start by taking the front bumper off. Never took my front bumper off ever in my life. Not even sure how to do it, but it can't be too incredibly hard. So I'm gonna get to it. Also, a pretty good thing, I finally, uh, <laughs> Finally decided I guess I'll take both these off. I think got cracked back when I had the thing completely slammed on stock wheels. Um, I guess for so far what I see is to get this guy loose is just the pressure clips with little Phillips in it. Inside here there was a clip up there. little Same little uh, pressure clip kind of thing. I undid both of those. Uh, cause those were holding the bumper in. So, um, just like when we did Anthony's grill, or took off his bumper for something, I forget exactly what it was for. The, the uh, <laughs> the piece that needs to come out is stripped, like, bad. Just like it was before. Same the other spot. one, other one came out, same spot, same kind of bolt. Um, so we have to drill this one out, too, so. Logan did my car, so, uh, I think it's only right if I drill out your car, your bolt. So what we're gonna do guys is we got a nice uh, drill bit on here. Uh, let's see what size we're using. I don't know, let's call it a quarter inch. 14 millimeter, it doesn't look like a 14 millimeter. It says 14 though. Four, it has 14 uh, centimeters. All right, 14 centimeter drill bit for the Logan here behind the camera. Uh, but what I'm we're gonna kidding. do is we're gonna start by inserting the tip into the head of the screw. And go ham. All right, guys, for a little lubrication, just like you may know, some of you might be too young. Uh, if you need to, spit on it. You got insurance uh, through your work, right? Health insurance? Yeah. Yeah. So does that cover ambulance uh, rides? I don't know why. Because I could just see that freaking drill bit when you're like going around circles just slipping off there and nailing you right in the freaking stomach and just drilling your guts out. You're sick, man. You're real don't, sick. Oh, I thought you were about to grab that, dude. I was about to say, don't talk. Dude. Ow! Truck, dude. It definitely just melted your class. Yeah, it did. Dude, I can smell it. Oh. <sighs> Watch out, watch out, can it go in the trash? Yeah, can it go no, in the trash? I don't know, sure. That's hot. You think? All right, so can I just hawk this off, like rip it? Well, you melted my plastic, I'm gonna need you to repair that. I'll fix it, we'll get it fixed. All right guys, so it is loose. If I can ask you to stand back, Logan. 
You, she just did. Dude, you just completely what? ruined my car. Everyone's gonna see that now when I prop my hood. Watch out, my fender welter. Alright. You ready? Oh, there's fog lights. Is there fog lights for you? Should be. No? Yeah. You got wire harness in this. I can't even rip it off. <laughs> I was you... planning on it too. Oh, shit. I got it, bro. I got it, man. Let's get back up on this. We got stuff we gotta unbolt. And he didn't, uh, he didn't know, we didn't know about this, uh, like I said, this is the first time doing it. And, uh, uh you didn't think I, dude, this is an MS3, bro. Like, I got fog lights, dude. Like, they're there, they work. Dude, you're making, you, did you piss, dude, come on, man. Just get them unplugged so we can get this shit off, man. Boom, front bumper's off. Yes, it fell on me when I was under there, um, getting a clip out for the fog lights. But. I rescued him. Yeah, after he, uh, he was over there painting while I was doing this. So, I also noticed something else, which is my pump for my windshield washer fluid is getting rubbed away by my ginormous tires sticking out because of that spacer. But, we're going to, uh, what, is it? what are you doing? I'm going to take the phone off. No, let's leave that there. I don't want it on. Uh, it's not your car. <laughs> I'm taking the phone off. Why? Because it, it looks tacky. I just don't like it. Weight how about reduction. how about you take weight How about you take this off? That'll be our weight reduction, and then we'll start uh, getting the intercooler out here and mocked up after I get the top mount off. Are we through? Yeah. Dope. So we're making brackets. We're making holes for that to mount to. And then those are gonna go behind it. Behind it down and connect to the intercooler. So what we're doing for the mounting bracket situation on the front, for the front mount, we have this bracket that we drilled holes through here. This is almost like a tube steel. There's a top section, a, you can see it from the side, a top section, a bottom section, uh, in between, and then another top and bottom section throughout here. So we're uh, through the top and bottom section of the first section with these bolts. So this is clamped down through those through that tube section. We have the studs sticking out, well it's a bolt, but sticking in between here. Sticking out the top. This is for those L brackets that are actually on here, yeah. So these brackets are on here, and that hangs down to there, and then that's going to sit through here with a bolt. Tightens into there. And that will be mounted permanently and then basically all we have yet to do is put hose clamps on everything make sure everything's snug and in place i already have the uh stock bypass valve fitted on here and since the stock intercooler had actual threads in the back of it for the bypass valve this one i had to use different hardware with a nut on the back that would fit so stock bypass valve cx racing front mount kit for 
And this, again, this was for a second gen Mazda Speed 3. There was maybe a few issues, I would say. Obviously, mounting the, mounting the front mount was kind of a challenge. And also, routing some of the piping um, on the hot side was kind of difficult. There's not really room for it. It'd be more ideal if it was over here somewhere, but it's over there, so um, we're dealing with what we got. It was used, and this is a vacuum slash boost hose line, that one in red, that taps into inside there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to tee that into my electronic boost controller, if I'm not mistaken. But that's that for now we're going to continue getting this mocked up mounted and clamped down and then we'll be back all right guys so we're swapping out this little nipple for that red boost hose like i showed you this one was in there um it was sitting up in there kind of like that and the angle was too much for that pipe to fit into but the 90 go off of off of that goes straight into here no problem so we just swapped it over real quick, no hassle, just a little extra stuff. We got the whole cold side piping of the intercooler mocked up like this thing's, it's solid. Intercooler's like dead smack in the middle. Test fit the bumper, bumper fits on around it, no problem. And actually, the way we mounted it, it just misses, the piping will just miss the uh, fog lights down there. So that's pretty awesome. And then one last thing, I took out the, that mesh is not going to be there no longer, and I took out the license plate bracket. What I did was just zip tied a strap across through the existing holes. So I just took zip ties and put them through the existing holes, ran them around through the back. Pretty simple, kind of clean looking, there's just those two little nub sticking there but that, I really don't care so we're get we're getting there we're definitely getting there all right guys so this is the end of day one I'm going to kind of explain what we have accomplished what our goals are for tomorrow Anthony just left we mounted his wheels up and whatever he got out of here so I just uh put the wheels on the car real quick just two lug nuts dropped it down rolled it in the garage door can close, no come here and steal my my turbo. No, I'm just kidding. So they don't steal my tools or nothing. Uh, I live in a pretty safe neighborhood though. I wouldn't expect anybody to come in here and mess with anything whatsoever. But it's in here. I have undercarriage um plastics, covers, stuff there, old intercooler and shroud there, uh bumper. Right now we have the ECU and battery tray box out of the way and we're trying to figure out exactly how to route the vacuum lines from the wastegate, electronic boost controller, etc. Basically the only thing I'm waiting for is to figure out how the vacuum lines run from that and I can put everything back together. So tomorrow will be a building day or reassembling day. So that's what's going on for tonight and what to look forward to for tomorrow. Okay guys, so it is now the next day, and I was really determined just to get this done because I had a time crunch I was trying to work around. So basically I just did everything off camera, and when I mean everything, I mean everything is back on. I've figured out problems that I was having trouble with from the night before, and stuff that I was even having trouble with before I even tried to start this project. And one thing I'm going to mention specifically is the fact that this diagram up here under the hood for the vacuum lines that run from the turbo, wastegate, um, boost control solenoid valve, etc. Um, is all really confusing. Stock, on here stock, that doesn't even match like correctly. So basically what I was doing was research, research, research. The only thing I was coming up with was people that are installing three port, but I have a stock. I used to have a three port electronic boost controller that was also controlled by a in like 
in cabin uh, little controller that I could flip through and manually do stuff. But that was before I really knew about the access port and different stuff. So after I got my access port and got tuned, the three port was still in there. But I picked up my uh, turbo minivan and I installed that on there. It works great on there, but I fixed a vacuum line leak a while back when I was doing an EGR EGR delete block off plate thing on here and I was all of a sudden running like 8, 9, 10, 11 pounds depending on what gear I was in but what I basically did was took and had a boost vacuum line left it open okay so like I was saying for the reason I am now running back to 22 pounds of boost like I was tuned for originally um, is really, really weird and it makes absolutely no sense to me, but all right. So from the turbo, there's a line that goes to the wastegate. And then on the other side of the wastegate, there's a line that goes to the e uh, electronic boost controller. And then there's another line from the electronic boost controller that's supposed to run back to your intake that goes back to the turbo. But on mine, I have the turbo that has the boost pressure that goes to the wastegate. But in between that line, there's a T, and that T goes to nothing. And I had it capped off, and that was a vacuum leak or boost leak, I was assuming, which I think would make sense. And then on the other side of that um, wastegate, it went to the thing, and it was all normal. But what I did was cap uncap that hose that's teed off in between the wastegate and the turbo and now I'm running higher boost which is like really weird so I don't understand it I've tried and researched and I took this battery tray out and the ECU and the battery box out and swapped it and tried every different which way to see what would happen and the only way I've been able to run boost is by keeping that one line um unplugged or let air in or out of it or whatever is ha happening with that. I even tried taking this um this boost uh that red hose I even tried connecting that to it because you think that's a boost pressure source and the other one would be a boost pressure pressure source you think together it would just equal out and do whatever but no that one has to be venting the atmosphere for whatever reason and my AFRs are good so I'm not really worried about it that's how it was always running until I capped it off and took out a vacuum line that was running to the old one that was uh, also open so whatever it's on everything fits really really perfectly I just have some plastic pieces that I have to put back on underneath the under tray and then the uh, ones that kind of block the wheel down there um let's see, let's see. yeah you can see the wheel right there too just like a little plastic piece that will cover that from water splashing in there whatever but it's nice weather out. I'm not really too worried about it. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, I'm sorry I didn't really get into too much of how the second gen kit versus the first gen kit fit on here. Because basically this is just how it was routed. Just down there, a little 45 with a 90 on a pipe that goes to a straight, goes to another 90. And that 90 has a U which I think is a 180, which sits up under there, comes down from there, comes around, goes into the intercooler, and basically the same thing on this side. Down there, it takes a 90 with a silicone elbow, and then that takes another uh, 180, like U-shaped pipe, and that one comes up to a 45, and then there's like a, a long 90 that goes up into the uh, flange with the bypass valve and the intake, so it fits. Wasn't really too much problems. So that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.